Right, welcome back to Ace Academy. Let's uh, load the right save file. The soft chirping of birds gradually awaken me from my slumber. My muscles screams, scream as I push myself up in bed. It looks like uh, being out of live matches for a while has taken its toll. Still, the pain is a reminder of a well played battle, which is comforting. 9am. With a yawn, I call out of bed and ready myself for the day. It should be a Saturday in game right now, so... I head downstairs expecting to see Nikki. Hey. No one's here. Weird. I pull up my phone and see a text message from her. Hey, I'm going out with some friends for breakfast and I then go shopping. I was going to tell you in person, but you were still sleeping where the time I was heading out. Lazy bones. Kaito said he's heading out to an emergency meeting. Uh, I know how useless you are, and when it comes to breakfast, to open a fridge and check the second row. Talk to you later. Useless? Her. Opening the fridge, I'm good at the most delicious looking egg salad sandwich I've ever seen. Damn it, Nikki, always making it possible to stay mad at you. I bring the sandwich to the table along with a poured glass of juice. I wonder what I should do today. See what Mario is up to. Uh, oh no, actually, we're going to have project with Yuna. Yes. I know we have a whole week to work on our projects, but I like getting my assignments done early. Hopefully, Yuna's the same way. I dial a number and wait. She picks up after a few rings. Hello? Hi, Yuna. It's uh, Riddle. Hi, how are you? Good. So I was wondering if you wanted to get together and work on a project today. Sure. I'm actually glad you called. I wasn't sure about you, but I like getting a head start on my assignments. I can't help but smile. So do I. She laughs. Good thing we're partners. When are you free? I'm free whenever. What about you? Same. Okay. Do you want me to come around noon? Do you want to meet around noon? Jesus Christ. Sure. At the library on campus? Yeah. Let's head out. Great. I'll see you then. See ya. We hang up. Ah uh, yes, the sound of a bike drive without seeing the bike. Or any visuals. When I arrive at campus, I park my bike away in front of the library. It's a few minutes until noon. I hope you don't get so soon. Every few minutes I check the time on my phone. 12.07. 12.13. 12.20. She hasn't she still hasn't arrived, so I text her. Hey, I'm here, where are you? I don't, have to, I don't have to wait long for my phone to vibrate. So I'm still waiting for the bus. Uh, it should be getting here soon, I think. Okay, I'll find this uh, room in the library. Okay, thanks. The library is mostly empty, which makes sense. Not many people spend their Saturday studying. Fortunately, it also means that most of the collaborative spaces are open. Wandering the shelves, I get her a few reference books I think will be helpful, but I can't find a specific case and uh, study I'm looking for. Shrugging, I headed to an empty room to wait for you now, flipping a nearby book to a random page. I half-heartedly skim it. I check the time again, 12.45. Doesn't seem like she's coming. Suddenly, I spot a flash of pink hair. Yuna is on the far side of the library search for me. I wave at her, uh, and she smiles at acknowledgement before hurrying over. I'm sorry I'm so late. The bus showed up way behind schedule, which is really unusual. I hope you aren't too angry with me. To be completely honest, that there's nothing she can do about that. So, no. I return a smile. It's fine. I'm just glad you made it. She slides to the chair across from me. I finally notice she isn't wearing a uniform. Uh, sure, I never realized how cute she is. You look really nice today. I like your outfit. She blushes shyly. Oh, thanks. You look nice too. Thanks. She smiles. It's a little funny to see you out of uniform, but in a good way. It feels more personal somehow. Yeah, I completely understand. She points to the books beside me. You already picked out references? I nod. Well, I was waiting for you, but I couldn't find the case study we need. Did you check the database? 
Not yet. Let's do that. She sends Elise away to the nearest computer. When we get there, she types in a quick search. It says the book is available. Let's go check the shelves again. She leads me towards the shell, back towards the shelf. So casually glancing back at me. Once we arrive, she scans uh, the shelf for the book and frowns when she doesn't see it. I don't understand. It should be here. Maybe the computer is wrong. Maybe, but we can't work on the project without it. Why don't we ask the front desk? Maybe they know where it is. She brightens up. Good idea. I start that back to where we came. When I glance at the card beside us, it's filled with books, but a specific title catches my, catches my eye. Wait. She pauses. Isn't that the book we need? She leans towards the card. It is. Great. I reach out to grab it. Uh, but that paused when I noticed the horrified expression in Yuna's face. What? You can't just take that. Why not? That's the return cart. So? The book hasn't been returned yet. What do you mean? It's already been checked back into the system and it's not in the cart. And it's in the cart. Yeah, but it hasn't been returned to the shelf yet. It'll be fine. We can make a copy of the section that we need and put it back in the cart. But what if someone notices it's missing? I glance around us. There isn't a librarian in sight. There's no one here. Besides, we'll be quick. Don't worry. She just nervously on her lip before giving me a reluctant nod. I grab the book that we had for the copy machine. The US footsteps are nimble and quick and I have to catch up with her. She glances back at me frequently. Obviously uncomfortable. She steps back over the copying machine and lets me handle the copying. It takes a couple of minutes for the machine to warm up, and Yuna fidgets the entire time. Is it working? Yeah, it just needs a minute. We should hurry up. Don't worry, we'll be fine. She seems unconvinced, but stays quiet. The second seems to stretch and slow while we we'll wait for the machine to process the copies. Yuna continues to bite at her lip. Finally, the copier spits out the papers. Yuna immediately collects them and re begins walking. Okay, <laughs> I completely just... The flow of that sentence was just off. Finally, the copier spits out the papers. And our papers. Yuna immediately collects them and begins walking. She quickens her pace the closer we get to the cart and doesn't relax until I nestle the book between his brethren. That wasn't so bad, was it? She smiles faintly, but her face seems a little pale. At least we have what we need. Speaking of which, we should get to work. She nods a return to our room. I tap out the last couple of words on a report, then lean back in my chair and grin at Yuna. And we're done. She breathes a sigh of relief. A sigh of relief, whoops. I'm glad we were able to get that finished. Now we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the week. Exactly. Yeah. We've been working for hours and it was getting pretty late. Yuna has already packed up our laptop, so I pack mine up too. She then uh, lays the remaining reference books in her arms. I'll go ahead and return these. Do you need help with that? No thanks, I'll just be a minute. She smiles reassuringly before she leaves. I tidy up the room while she takes care of the books and meet her outside the building. Well, I better head to the bus stop. I'll go with you. Oh, you don't have to. I drove here, so I don't mind. Besides, it's gonna kinda late. Who knows how long the bus will take? How long the bus will be? She nods and smiles in appreciation. The bus shelter is empty when we arrive, and I suspect that the bus is nowhere to be found. We got a lot done today. You're very easy to work with. Thanks. For a moment, I thought you were ready to bail me. She glances curiously at me. When was that? And when we found the case study. Oh. She shifts. She shifts gen uh, slightly. I thought about it. I've never done anything like that before. Now it was my turn to look confused. You never borrowed a book? No, I've never borrowed a book without permission. It wasn't really without permission. We totally broke the rules. I don't know if I'd go that far. We did. 
You're not supposed to use a book that's on the return cart. It's not done being processed. Yeah, but it's just a minor thing. It's like we ever get to clean up uh, your train to cafeteria. She stares blankly at me. Have you ever forgotten to clean up your tray? Of course not. You're supposed to clean up after yourself. Okay, then it's like... Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> None of these seem like an actual good um a good thing to say. Taking extra free samples. When a store was free samples and you wait a while before going back again, so the person handing out samples doesn't recognize you. But what about the people who haven't already received a sample? What about them? If I take them, they won't have any. They have a lot to give away. Okay, how about... Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, taking more than one after than a mint from a restaurant. When a restaurant has a bowl of mint or candy for the customers to take after a meal and you take more than one. She wrinkles her brow, her brow. I don't believe that's a custom in Japan. Oh, it must be an American thing then. Okay, how about... <laughs> take an extra chopsticks and napkins. When you're picking up food, you take extra chopsticks and napkins at the self-serve bar. You know France. I only need one pair of chopsticks to eat. They're for later. If everyone took things in excess, then that leaves nothing for others. Do you do all of these things? Oh boy. Uh, no. She stares at me with wide eyes. But that's breaking the rules. They're more like guidelines. Uh, I've never broken the rules. Not even once? It would lead to utter chaos if everyone ignored the rules and did what they wanted. I mean, fair, but... I kind of like this bus, right? Huh? Well, this guy just said it was supposed to be here about half an hour ago, but it's late. Oh. She looks disappointed. I was hoping the bus issue would resolve itself before I had to go home. Doesn't seem like it's coming. Can anyone pick you up? She shakes her head. My family is out of town this weekend. It's fine. I take the bus all the time. Offer her a ride. I can take you home. She smiles but shakes her head. I don't want to cause any trouble for you. I don't mind waiting. It's not trouble at all. We ride the same bus line, sir, on my ride home. That's very kind of you, but you don't have to worry about me. I'm used to waiting for the bus. I know, but it's getting late and I've left you here alone. I'd be worried you never got home safely. Her cheeks tinge pink and she looks away. A, a small smile uh, playing at her lips. You'd be worried about me? Yeah. She looks back at me, a full smile on her face. Well, it will get dark soon, and I wouldn't want you to worry. I grate at her. Come on, let's go pick up my bike. She returns my smile with an even brighter smile. Okay, thanks. When we reach my bike, Yuna's eyes widen in appreciation. You have a beautiful ride. I can't, uh, I can't help myself for feeling a warmth. <laughs> Cries in the literate. Or whatever. Not being able to read properly. I don't know. Or not being able to vocalize properly. Then also. Well, uh, works. I can't help myself from feeling a warmth of pride. Thanks. I bought her back from the States. She goes everywhere with me. I open my bike and pat on the seat behind me. She carefully climbs on. Are you ready? Um... Helmets? What is it? What am I supposed to hold on to? Oh, why are you kind of supposed to hold on to me? What? What's wrong? Um, this was a bad idea. I, I 
should go wait for the bus. I feel like it's growing behind me. Before you go with the bike, I reach back, grab her hands, and wrap her arms around my waist. You know that's at a small gasp. See, it isn't so bad, right? Um, r right. I can feel the warmth of you against me and the softness of her chest pressing against my back. I try not to think about it. Her grip tightens around my waist as we continue down the freeway. Yuna diligently directs me towards her house. The scenery blends into a blur of colors as we drive by. After a few minutes, Yuna's direction sounds more confident and has a tinge of excitement in her voice. Her grip relaxes slightly and I'm ac acutely aware of every time she presses close to me to speak. I feel her hand slip away for a moment. I assume to push her out of the way and her, eye and her chest push up against me as she sighs. Are you okay? Yes. Sorry. I just love sunsets, and the view right now is breathtaking. I quickly glance towards the sun as it hovers over the horizon, reflecting a trail of golden fire on the glittering waves of the ocean. You definitely don't see sunsets like these in New York. I could get used to this. Are you liking it in Isokaze so far? Yeah, but I haven't seen much outside of Ace. You should go to the park. It's so beautiful. Especially in spring, when the cherry blossoms bloom. I used to go there all the time and play on the statues. You'll learn a lot about the town's culture and history there too. Although I haven't been there since... a while, so I'm not sure if it's changed at all. Maybe you can come with me and show me. She pauses. Sure. After all, Isokaze is a pretty special place. Yeah, I'm beginning to see that. She leans closer into me, but doesn't say anything more. Before long, we arrive at our house. She slips off the bike and waits for me to do the same. As I walk her to her front door, she turns to me. Uh, I don't anticipate her stopping and almost trip into her, but catch myself just in time. Still, I hear a slight gasp when she notices how close we are to each other. And she suddenly becomes shy and takes a small step back. Thanks for taking me home. I had a nice time today. Me too. Maybe we can have. Maybe we can hang out soon. Sure. And do something besides studying. She laughs. I'd like that. Have a good night. Get home safely, okay? I will. Talk to you later. She turns towards her door while I go back to my bike. As I switch in the engine, I see her turn around. She gives me a brief wave before riding inside, and I wave back before heading home. Ah. As I walk into the room, I'm assaulted by the sounds of laughter. Uh, seated in the living room is Nikki and two other girls. They glance up to me as I enter. Nikki gives me with a wide grin and waves me over, while the two girls begin whispering to each other. Hey, you're back! Where did you go? I met up with you to work on our project. Uh, seriously? You did homework on a Saturday? Yeah. Right. I'm sure it had nothing to do with seeing a cute girl. Oi. Nikki's friends suddenly seem to be alert. To be on alert. We really did do homework. In fact, we finished the project. You're telling me that you were alone with a cute girl for hours and all you did was homework? Uh, yeah. She sighs. <sighs> You're hopeless. Nikki's friends glance at each other and giggle. What are you guys doing? Plain draw it. What's that? The first girl speaks before Nikki can. It's a fun game. You pick a word from a pile and draw it and people guess what it is. Sounds easy enough. Join us. Then we can play in teams of two. Yeah, join us! Uh... I glance at Nikki, who shrugs. Sure, why not? Okay. The two girls jump up excitedly. The first one gets up from the couch and grabs my arm, then drags me back to sit with her. Yay! You can be on my team! Oi! No! You should be on my team! Did a girl grab my other arm? Um... 
You and Nikki are like best friends. You two should be on a team. She takes tighter on my arm. But he's a pilot at Ace, which means he's smarter and should be on my team. I feel like I'm getting, I'm going to be ripped in half. Ouch! I thought you guys were my friends, not his. We are! We are! But how come you guys don't want to be on my team? They glance at each other, but neither girl lets go of me. Nikki crosses her arms. Fine. Well, he's my brother, so he's going to be on my team. Oi. Don't do this. <laughs> Both girls plan a disappointment and let go. You're no fun, Nikki. Whatever. You guys can go first. Fine. Nikki's friend picks up the cart, uh, up a cart, and smiles when she sees the word. She glances at me quickly, then starts drawing. It's the guy with blonde hair wearing something eerily familiar. The second girl answers immediately. Hot. The word is hot. They both burst into a fit of giggles. Nikki grabs the paper and looks at it. What? How did you get hot from that? She stops a drawing in my face. Would you have known this was hot? No, but it's probably a girl thing. No, but I think you girls would know better uh, than I would if a guy is on or not. Nikki blinks at me. Okay, never mind. Why wouldn't you draw fire or like a cup of coffee or something? Who is this even supposed to be? Both girls look at me and giggle again. Nikki glances between the three of us, then frowns. Guys, my brother! So? He's cute, but he's my brother? The girls exchange a glance and gasp. Oh, we had no idea. Sorry, but you should have said something. Nikki blinks in confusion. Oh boy. Huh? Uh, said what? That you and him... You know... She nudges her head towards me. The relationship you have with him? Uh, <laughs> oh no! Nikki is to look blank for a few seconds. Then her expression changes to horror. Oh my god, no! It makes sense as to why you got so protective over him. And why you wanted him on your team. Nikki, you don't have to be embarrassed, it's okay! Gross, gross, gross! Things just got really weird. I'm going to head upstairs. Oh no! Stay and play with us! Nope. I'm out. Goodbye. Nope. Nikki stands and pushes me, toward, pushes me towards the stairs. Don't listen to them. Just go. I'm going. I'm going. I was already planning on going. I rush up the stairs, but guess they were hearing them arguing below. Why did you send him away, Nikki? We were having a good time. Yeah, plus he's hot. Ew, you guys, stop it. It's not a crime to look. Well, it should be. Excuse me, I'm just gonna go throw up. The voices drift away as I enter my room and I flop up to my bed. I would never understand girls, but it's kind of funny that they thought how I was hot. Actually, they weren't so bad to look at. Really? 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 I grin as I remember them uh, clutching my arms uh, close to their chest. With others like that, you kind of forget things. Like that they're only in high school. Yeah. Smile does my face. Maybe it's a good thing Nikki doesn't bring her friends home ever, very often. Just then, my phone dings. Announcing an email. Breathing a relief, I eagerly reach over and, and open the mail. All team rankings will be posted on Monday. I guess I'll find out my ranking when I go to school. I spend the rest of the evening browsing online for cat videos until it's time for bed. As soon as my head hits a pillow, I fall asleep. Who knows what tomorrow will hold. My alarm, <laughs> my alarm awakens me and I go through the routine of getting ready for the day. Nikki's already downstairs and after a quick breakfast we both head to school. 
Wait, it's supposed to be sun... Sure, whatever. My class today is a little different from the usual. My class today is a little... Uh, because that sentence just not ending there. Continuing on, even though it... <laughs> It's something I explained to the first hour already. Students sit scattered around the room, but as I walk past them to find a seat, I overhear snippets of conversation in different languages. Like me, they're all foreign to Japan. I settle into a seat at the back of the class, far from the entrance, and gaze out the window while I wait for the professor to enter. Suddenly, the room quiets down. I glance at the door, expecting to see the professor, but a girl with bright blue eyes and blonde hair is there instead. Although uh, she has her hip uh, cocked to the side, she still carries a commanding presence. All eyes are focused on her, but she doesn't even blink at the attention. She scans the room, and when the gaze settles on me, she flashes me an excited grin. I overheard the two guys next to me commenting about her. Who is that girl? She must be new. I would have remembered a hottie like her. I can feel the heat of her runs. A glass uh, as she steadily makes her way towards me. Hey, she's coming our way. C could it be? Is she coming to us? Whispers flow behind her, but she ignores them and sits in the empty desk beside me. Hey, how's it going? I wait for the other guys to answer, but they whisper to each other instead. Who's that guy? Does she know him? She must. Why else would she search him out? You're right. She's way out of his league. She continues to stare at me, waiting expectantly. Uh, so she's talking to me. Uh, good. And you? Better now that I found you. Oh boy. You are looking for me. She merely smirks. Do we know each other? No, but I saw you at the qualifiers. Oh boy. You did? Yeah, I watched you take out those two AIs by yourself. Sure, that happened, yeah. Ah, right. She leans in close to me, and then her voice takes on a bravey tinge. You were really impressive. I've never seen anybody's core do that before. Thank you. F thanks. How did you do it? Well, actually, I. Before I can answer, the professor walks in. The girl gives me a lingering smile before shifting back into her seat. Good morning, class. Welcome to the Foreign Exchange International Bridging. This class is for those who are new to Japan or would like a stronger understanding of Japanese culture and the history of the Izukaze. That means most of your assignments will require you to leave campus and explore the city. The class should be interesting. It'll be nice to get off campus every once in a while. Now, let's begin. You'll find your first class assignment online. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. The cute girl turns back to me and hands me a torn sheet of paper. Don't lose this, okay? She winks. What is it? It's my number. Oh boy. But we only just met. Isn't it a little too soon uh, to be giving me this? You think so? Oh, I just thought it'd be nice to have a friend. Oh, actually... Yeah, it'll be nice. I write down my number of past door. She smiles her thanks. Call me sometime, okay? She grabs her back and starts to leave. Wait. She flips her and lets her gaze fall back in uh, back on me. What's your name? Valerie. I'm Drew. I know. She winks at me again and turns away. I watch Valerie's hips sway mesmerizingly as she exits the room, and I'm left wondering what exactly just happened. Now, I've never met a girl as bold as her before. 
And how did she know my name? From the qualifiers? I shake the questions out of my head and collect my things. Did you see that? He didn't even ask for it, but she just gave that guy her number. Oh, for fuck's sake. No way. The two of them crowd me as I pack up. Dude, that was amazing. What was? That chick was all over you. What's your secret? I can tell you my secret. Do you want to know? It's my core. Huh? I mean, how did you get a girl like that to just give you her number? Yeah, usually we have to ask for it and that hardly ever works. I shrug and shoulder my back. <laughs> really? <sighs> I'm going for it. You have to be Drew. I ex I no 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 okay nothing in particular. <laughs> that no that that no. The sentence that came out that that literally came out of that no. I didn't do anything. She just gave it to me. They frown. Guys like us should look out for each other. Guys like us. Yeah. Tell us how you did it. A few students hover around the doorway, unsure if they should enter the classroom or not. Look, I've got to go. Other people need to use this room. One day, we'll learn your true secret. Sure. I'll leave before they can say anything else. Now the class is over, I've got some free time. What do I feel like doing? What do I feel like doing? Gives me the option of... Three female characters. That, <sighs> okay, sure. Um, okay, are we? My stomach comes loudly for food. Hopefully, nobody else heard that. I at least have plenty of time to grab lunch before my next class. Uh, there's a cafeteria on campus, which I've eaten at a couple of times. The food is cheap and surprisingly good. Way better than the cafeteria food at C I N Y. Uh, but the options are limited. I've heard the Pirates Lounge has some decent options, and their daily specials incorporate cuisine from other cultures. It might be worth a look. I navigate to the lounge. Luckily, there isn't a line. I hope that's because I beat the lunch rush, and not because the food is bad. Uh, pushing through, uh, pushing those thoughts aside, I walk up to the bar. Hello, what do you have? Hmm. I still limit the menu on the wall. Behind the bartender is a chalkboard with a daily special written down. Cheeseburger with fries. Uh, hell yeah, burger and fries. I wish, I must be a lucky day. I've been craving a good burger ever since I landed in Japan. I have the burger with fries. How special, burger and fries coming up. That'll be 873 credits. After paying, I move over to the side away to my lunch. Within a few minutes, he slides over a tray with a juicy burger and a mound of fries. I can't wait to start eating this piece of a burger. Uh, picking up my tray, I scan a pound of lounge for an empty table. Most are given by single students focused on their own food or studies. As I'm debating whether or not to join a random student, I spot a girl with reddish orange hair sitting alone. It's Kiori. I breathe out of sight of her leave and make my way over to her. Hey. She looks up at me. Oh, hi. Mind if I sit there? She shakes her head. Thanks. I place my tray next to her bento and sit down. Gary evokes her mind on our meal and eats in silence. This is pretty awkward. Let's speak up. So, how are things? Good. She doesn't even bother looking at me. Um, and what do you think about the weather today? For fuck's sake. <laughs> this is seriously like pulling a teeth. Like, like, like pulling teeth. I shouldn't be surprised though. Like, it's scary after all. Small talk is not a forte. I pick up a ketchup packet and squeeze the contents over my fries. You're really eating that? Huh? Gary has finally looked up for my food and examines my meal. Burgers are very unhealthy. They are full of fat and very high in calories. The fries are even worse. 
those are just empty carbs. And the average meal holds the amount of sodium an average person needs in a day. It tastes delicious. That's what makes it taste good. Kira leans back into the bar with the shrugs. Whatever. It's your choice. I go on to the bento. It has an assortment of uh, simple maki rolls. I'm just glad I'm eating this instead of that. But well, sometimes I nice to eat something tasty for a change. She frowns in irritation. What makes you think my bento isn't tasty? I take another uh, look at it and smirk. You don't need to get so defensive. De uh, <laughs> defensive? Uh, I'm sure it's healthy, uh, but that thing barely looks seasoned. Oof. Uh, Kiri shoves a maki roll into my mouth oh, while I'm mid-sentence. Don't judge it until you've tried it. Ouch. <laughs> okay. Wow, this is surprisingly delicious. It's light with simple ingredients, but each bite is still packed with flavor. Kiri quickly retracts her chopsticks. When she realizes what she's done, her cheeks flush. Oof. I take it back. That was pretty tasty. Curry not satisfied. Maybe next time you won't be so dismissive of my advice. I figured Curry liked to eat healthy, but I hadn't realized she cared about taste as well as nutrition. We end up finishing our meals in silence, but I'm glad I was able to learn a little more about about Curry. Remembering that the team rankings were supposed to be posted this morning, I take out my phone and notes an unread email from school. The rankings are posted online and can be accessed through the web link. I tap the link about it in the email and wait. The page doesn't load. Damn this uh, damn thing still isn't working for me. There's a note of one of the emails saying a physical copy of the rankings posted in the Pirates Lounge, so I head there. I, did. I think I just came from there as well. Yeah, I did. Upon entering, I noticed a small crowd of pilots on the opposite uh, wall in front of the posted ranks, is surrounding a smiling guy with white hair and showering him with praise. I have a brief feeling of deja vu. Pushing past the crowd, I eagerly check the board to search my own team. My stomach uh, twists in into knots. I really don't know what to expect. Once I find a team, I breathe a sigh of relief. Rank 21, that's not bad at all. The pilots beside me are still take, talking and tune, uh, talking, and I tune into their conversation. Congratulations on being ranked number one again this year, Akira. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. But it's actually my team who deserves the congratulations. They all fought really well. Still, you were a big reason why your team got first rank. I watched the match, and you were amazing out there. Thanks. I appreciate it. Don't you already have a sponsor, too? Yeah. Who is it? It's Illudian Enterprises. I've heard their weapons are pretty cutting edge. Wow, you're so lucky. You basically had a sponsor waiting for you. Before anyone else can reply, a group of girls cut through the crowds to read the rankings. A tall girl with long, dark hair steps forward and squints at the board, and then she cheers excitedly. Hey! We made it to the top ten! She jumps up in excitement. My eyes are drawn to her chest. But I look away before I catch myself staring. Are you fucking... Ugh. Glancing around me, it seems like I was the only guy she distracted. Are you serious, Meg? One of her teammates pushes past to double-check the post. Of course I'm Especially considering how long we've actually practiced together. That's true. Akira joins May. Mel? I don't know. May, I think. Congratulations on your rank, May. May. Okay, good. Thank you. But I'm sure it means nothing compared to being number one. She finds him a warm smile and rubs, uh, rubs her arm. Squeezing uh, her chest together in the process. Akira, 
uh, Akira falls for a second, then shakes his head and speaks earnestly. No, you girls are pretty impressive. You're a new team, right? Formed over the summer? May not. It's not often that a team who hasn't had much chance to practice and learn from each other is able to make top rank. You have every right to be proud. Thanks. That means a lot. I can't believe Akira just said we impressed him! I know! Do you already have sponsors too? Not yet, but we aren't worried. We've had a few companies reach out to us today. It must be nice not to worry about sponsorship. I think my team and I will go through the SBA to get a sponsor. SBA? What's that? I do a quick search on my phone. A website for uh, for a student-run association pops up on the school network. Ah, it's sponsorship uh, bridging association. A student association that pairs sponsorship opportunities with different teams. Sounds simple enough. I click on the more information tab. Why should you wear? Why, why should your team get a sponsor? The SBA prides themselves on pairing appropriate sponsors with Ace Academy teams who have proven their ability in battle. Uh, these sponsors fund teams for the repair costs as well as provide them with equipment improvements. This is a mutual relationship that benefits both the team uh, through equipment costs and repairs and the sponsor by giving them a great exposure uh, and an opportunity to advertise through their teams. I scan through the rest of the website, looking for an on-campus location. I just stop by and see if they can help us with a sponsor. Instead of the location, I find a student volunteer list and the name pops out at me. Yuna Misaki. I don't know she was part of the SBA. Maybe she'd be willing to help us out. It's a bit loud since those groups of pilots are still talking, so I move out to quiet, quiet uh, corner and dial a Yuna's number. Hello? Hi, Yuna. It's Rue. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, good. How are you doing? Quite well. Great. Do you need something? Uh, oh, yes, I did. Uh, I came across the SBA website, SBA website today and noticed your name on the volunteer list. Are you still part of the association? I am. I was looking to get a team sponsor, but wasn't sure how. Oh. Then I had a few student students talk about the SBA today and figured I'd check it out. When I saw your name, I just had to ask. I'd be happy to help you find a sponsor. Really? You don't mind? It's no trouble at all. I'll check in with the association in the morning, and I'll be sure to keep you in the loop. Thanks, I appreciate it. Did you need anything else? I don't mean to rush you, but I've got to head out. No, that's all. Okay, then I'll talk to you when I have something. Great, thanks again for your help. Anytime, see you around. Yeah, see ya. The phone clicks as she hangs up. At least we're one step close to getting a sponsor. I hope. I glance at the time. It's still early in the evening. What should I do? Sure. I feel like doing something active, but I don't just want to live wait. Uh, I heard the recreation center has always a lot of activities going on. There's bound to be something out there I can do. As I walk in, the first thing I notice is how much natural light shines into the room. The facility is huge, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. There are signs leading to every uh, to the different gymnasiums, uh, and even a pool. There's a locker room nearby, and I take advantage of the facility to change into my gym clothing. Gym clothes, whatever. Uh, as I grow to as I continue to explore, I spot a tennis court. Fill the students playing matches. A few students crowd the sidelines, waiting for the court to be open. Yuna's among them. She's standing alone, stretching out her arms. I head over and greet her. Hey, Yuna. Hi. She seems surprised. I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't expect to be here, to be honest. She chuckles. So, you play tennis? A little, just for fun. Do you play? No, I've had much. Uh, I've never had much time for sports. Schoolwork takes priority. You know, not an understanding. 
adapt on a whole gear thing, but it's nice to do something different once in a while. Of course. So have you been waiting uh, long for a court to free up? Not too long. Plus, I'm next on the wait list, so once the court opens up, I'll be able to play. Who are you playing against? She shrugs. Anyone who's available. Uh, how about you and I play a game then? She said I seem shy. Sure, but I have to warn you, I'm a bit rusty. I haven't played much this season. Let's have a fun match. Fun uh, For a game between friends, who the better players doesn't matter, just as long as we're having fun. I agree. I'm sure this will be a good match either way. I can't uh, play with no equipment though. Is there somewhere I can borrow a racket? I actually have an extra you can use. Great, thanks. A uh, court opens up and you and I take our place on opposite sides. Since you're feeling a little anxious, why don't you start first? Oh no, that's okay. Please, I insist. She smiles, uh, she smiles her thanks and nods. As we settle into place, I give our racket a few experimental swings. Once I'm ready, once ready, I nod. Yuna tosses the ball into the air and then pulls her back her arm. With a resounding crack, her racket connects the ball with a powerful, powerful serve, Jesus Christ. The ball whizzes towards me at lightning speed. Ret fuck. I barely managed to skip the ball. I... Sorry, I, I thought I actually had skipped the line. I should actually just... There we go. It speeds past me in the blur. Too fast for me to catch it. What the heck was that? I, I, okay, no, I did skip a line then because this is the line that I saw. I'm sorry. I can see his worried face and stop out of out of my days. It's fine. I wasn't expecting that, but I'll be uh, expecting your next one. She's well, so I'm prepared for her next serve. Fifteen love. She bounced the ball a few times, preparing herself before the serve. Then she throws it overhead. Her next serve is just as powerful. The ball zooms towards me. I catch the tip of my racket. The ball flies directly but makes it over the net. You not smoothly parries it back. The longer we play, the more I'm able to keep up uh, a volley. Yuna's face is set in deep concentration, but she easily counters my hits every time the ball flies over the net. If this is how she plays when she's out of practice, I'm then I'm not sure I'm ready to face her at a at her peak. Still, the game is over for I know it. I would I couldn't compare it to her, and she won six two. That was a good game. You did really well. You're being too kind. That was clearly a one-sided game. I'm not sure I believe that you're out of practice. You were amazing out there. You know, Yuna's cheeks are flushed from both the match and from embarrassment. <laughs> You have nothing to be embarrassed about. Even at your worst, you're still better than me. That's not true. Are you part of the school league? She shakes. She. <laughs> she shakes her head no. You should really consider trying out. You think so? Definitely. She seems pleased, but shrugs. Thanks, but I'm not sure I have time for that kind of commitment. Hey, are you guys finished? We turn to face a pair of students walking onto the court. Oh, yes, we just finished. Actually, we were wondering if you two would be interested in a doubles match. Doubles match? You and I glance at each other and both break into a grin. Sounds like fun. Yeah, let's do it. Great. You guys can serve first. Good luck. I retreat the ball and toss to Yuna. She catches it and preps to serve. I don't think these two know what they're in for. When I get home, Uncle Kaito is lounging uh, on the couch with his feet up on the coffee table and staring intently at his laptop. Mounds of papers and folders surround him, with a few loose pieces strewn across the floor. Hi hey, Uncle, is Nikki home? A clearly started, Kaito spins to face me and loses the rest of his papers in a scattered mess. He rubs at his eyes before letting out his resigned sigh, sigh, then kneels to pick them up. I bent down to help. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. 
it's not your fault. Sometimes this house can be too quiet. Quiet? I guess that, make, that means Nikki isn't, isn't home. He gives, he gives me a weak smile. I can't tell that he's tired. Kind of been working late almost every night since Nikki and I arrived. I hope he's not overworking himself. I am back all the papers I collect and he begins showing them into folders again. Can I help? He hesitates, then shakes his head. Thanks, bud. But I've got it. I sit beside him anyway. What are you working on? Just some work stuff. Right. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't really know what Uncle Kaito does for a living. What kind of work stuff? A lot of things. He's being awfully evasive with, with his answers. Is it a secret? Huh? What you're doing? Is it a secret? No, of course not. Well, getting info from you is like uh, pulling teeth. Is a little is a little like pulling teeth. He laughs. Sorry, I'm just looking over the contracts for the restaurant. Although that being said, contracts. Don't you have a department that handles those? Yeah, we do, but as regional manager, I have to look at them first to make sure they include everything we discuss. Then I send it to the deal desk to make sure all the legalese is correct and that there are no hidden clauses. He pats a pile of papers closest to him. We're opening up a new cafe in the next month, hence all the new contracts. Oh, really? Yeah. Actually, it won't be too far away. You know that empty lot in the strip mall? The one that's been under construction? Yep. That's where it'll be. That's pretty close. I'll stop by after it opens to check it out. Have you been to any of our other restaurants yet? Uh Please do not be disappointed. I put on my best apologetic grin and rub the back of my head. Uh, not exactly. The character just smiles at me. That's okay. You've been pretty busy, but you should check them out. They're pretty good if I do say so myself. Oh, you say so yourself, okay. <laughs> sure. Well, if you get the chance, you should try the place near the park. It serves Western-style cuisine and is very popular in Isokaze. I know it won't be exactly like the food you had back in the States, but I'd be curious to see how you like it. <laughs> sure, sounds great. He grins at me before turning back to his stack. I should probably let him work. I'm going to go upstairs. Good luck with all of this. Thanks. I head to my room and do another quick search on the SBA. Uh, then I decide to check out what other clubs there are days. It sounds like there is a club for everything. Tennis, cooking, business, culture, etc. At some point, I vaguely hear voices downstairs. Nikki must be home. After a good convo, she comes upstairs and I hear her shut the door to her room. I get to hear serving the nets, but after all, my eyelids start to droop and I crawl into bed before drifting to sleep. And like every session so far, that's where I actually uh, ended. There we go. I'll make sure to not have that as the start. But uh, that's it. We're three hours in from the eight and a half. So we're making good progress.